Okay, what I'm going to do right now is talk about the State Commission on Judicial Conduct and how to file a complaint online. If you look at the top here, I'm at www.scjc, State Commission Judicial Conduct, .texas.gov. And filing a complaint against a judge is actually very easy. If you come to this website, the first thing that you'll see, uh, the Welcome to the State Commission on Judicial Conduct online, and right down here it talks about how to file a complaint. So if you're filing a complaint about more than one judge, please use a separate form for each judge. Uh, but once you go to and you click on that, the, um, it brings you to the complaint uh, frequently asked questions. And if you go down to here, you can either send your complaint uh, to the following address or you can complete it online with the online complaint form. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, being as this is going to take a little bit of time, I'm just going to go through it quickly and then I, I already have a filled out one, more or less. So the submitter information, you put your name, your date of birth, your address, all of these things right over here. But you also want to make sure that you have information about the judge. So for example, you need to know what type of a judge it is. I see a judge of a ju justice of peace, municipal, supreme court, and the judge that I recently filed a complaint against was a district court judge. So once you enter that, you're going to go to the county that that judge was at. And being as he was in Palo Pinto, I am going to go down to Palo Pinto. And once that is selected, you get to choose the court. So it's the 29th court. Now from there, you get to choose the judge. So the judge that I'm filing a complaint against is Judge Michael Moore. Or I should say the judge that I filed the complaint against. And if you have the case information, you should put that down. Um, if it's pending, include it on appeal. If you have the information for the attorneys, you should put this down as well. If you have corroborating witnesses, so for example, <clears throat> when I um, when I filed the complaint against Judge uh, Michael Moore in Palo Pinto County, I had two um, witnesses that corroborated what I said, so I put them down. Uh, I don't think I had the address for the first one, but I did get the address and city and everything for the second one. Um, and then I put down what the person witnessed. And then you get to put down the date of the alleged misconduct of the judge and factual details of your complaint against the judge. How did you hear about the State Commission of Judicial Conduct? You can put down friend, you can put down attorney, whatever else, whatever you want to put down. Um, whether you want to maintain, wish to maintain confidentiality, but basically just enter your name and the date and you click that I am not a robot and you submit it. So a completed form, more or less, it's not completely completed. Uh, because I kept my name out of it right now, but um, my name was here, my date of birth, address, city, everything else. And again, I filed a complaint against Judge Michael Moore of the 29th District Court in Palo Pinto. So I had down the cause number, I had down the attorney information. When it came down to the witness information, my first witness that I had down there, and I had to put his name down, of course, um, this person witnessed that we were not permitted in the courtroom in violation of Article 1, Section 13 of the Texas Bill of Rights. His testimony begins at 1310 of the video located at, and I actually recorded a video with him. Um, when, I, when I talked with him, he mentioned this in the video, so I put the video online and I gave the State Commission on Judicial Conduct where exactly it began. Uh, then there was a second person as well, this other person, I had done all of his information. What did he witness? He witnessed the extreme bias of Michael Moore. Uh, maybe I should have said Judge Michael Moore, but I didn't want to give him that honor right now, honestly. Uh, but Because I thought it was very biased, what he, what he did. Uh, at least parts of it, not the entire thing, but parts of it were very, very biased. And his testimony begins at 4450, and that's the video located. Actually, it's the same video. Uh, I videotaped a bunch of people regarding what happened that day. So here are the details of my complaint. Uh, again, um, if you don't have this filled in right, it's going to let, let you know that it's invalid. If I wanted to put in, and I don't remember what the date was, but if I put down 10-5-2020, okay, now it's going to be valid. Uh, so you can't, um, let's see, um, date of misconduct. I'll just put that back in here. So that's going to be invalid. But this was my complaint that I wrote. Uh, and I'm not saying that I got have this perfect because I, I really don't know. Uh, a lot of times, you know, I've submitted several different complaints. So far, honestly, nothing has really worked well. Uh, it almost seems at times like the State Commission on Judicial Conduct is not very interested in looking at 
uh, judicial misconduct. Uh, from, from what I've seen, I mean, I thought I put everything down there perfectly, but sometimes these things take a long time. Often these cases take almost a year, and it's really a shame because once you file a complaint, it should be uh, looked at much more quickly, in my opinion, than what it is right now. <clears throat> so anyway, I did file the complaint, and I can read it here. I was a witness to judicial misconduct against Brandon Johnson, who was a party to this case. I and about 18 other people, some from as far as 250 miles away, drove to Palo Pinto County to support Brandon Johnson and to serve as witnesses to help ensure that Brandon would have a fair hearing. We would have logged on to YouTube or Zoom to follow the meeting, but Judge Michael Moore did not permit that and chose to have an in-person hearing. And this was, of course, during COVID, so almost all the judges are having online meetings. For whatever reason, Judge Michael Moore did not uh, want that. He wanted to have an in-person hearing. When we got to the hearing, we were informed that we would not be permitted to enter the courtroom um, and that says contract. It sh what it should say is contrary to Article 1, Section 13 of the Texas Bill of Rights, which states that the courts shall remain open. This was an unconstitutional infringement of our constitutional guarantee. Further, I requested, um, okay, boy, I made a couple of typos I didn't catch, to videotape the hearing as a member of Dad Talk Today Media. I was denied the ability to do so, contrary to Article 1, Section 8 of the Texas Bill of Rights, which says that no law shall ever be passed curtailing the liberty of speech or of the press. Judge Michael Moore decided to unilaterally abrogate uh, me as a member, um, boy oh boy, as uh, of Dad Talk Today Media. Judge Michael Moore treated Brandon Johnson in a discriminatory manner. Even though he knew that Reagan Johnson, that is his ex-wife, was guilty of, and I probably should have put that down there, um, Brandon's ex-wife was guilty of interference with child custody, a state jail felony, according to te 2503 of the Texas Penal Code. He demanded that Brandon Johnson undergo a psychological evaluation in three counseling sessions with a person that he appointed. When Brandon said that he would conditionally accept, provided his ex-wife undergo the same, the judge denied his request and ordered him alone to do so. Everybody felt this was very discriminatory because we know, we have seen, uh, we've seen videotapes, and I've also been there in person to watch Reagan Johnson, by the way, who was the mayor of Mineral Wells, um, interfere with the court order that he, when uh, when Brandon is supposed to have his children. She intentionally interfered. She has withheld the children from him and she's given all sorts of nonsensical reasons or maybe in her mind there are good reasons. But she has been doing this for a while and uh, we followed him. So again, I went out there to make sure that I was not being misled by the camera. I was there in person. I took my own video of it. When Brandon said he would provide, he would accept provided his ex-wife undergo the same, the judge denied his request and ordered him alone to do so. Everyone felt his actions were discriminatory, especially in light of the fact that Brandon was merely trying to see his children, whom had been withheld from him by his ex-wife. If the judge were unaware of this issue, he should not have been, because in my letter to the court, because I wrote a letter to the court the day before, I said not only that I was a witness to this event, and that I had called the police department to report a felony in progress, the police officer came and made a report uh, but I even provided the location for video footage that I took located at, and again, I put the, the YouTube video down there. So this was something that I sent directly to Judge Michael Moore. If he did not know that this was taking place, he should have, and really he did know because I believe he's also been following Brandon, and uh, part of the reason that he's upset with Brandon is because Brandon was doing videos about what is going on in Mineral Wells, his wife keeping the kids from him, contrary to the Texas Penal Code. 2503 says this is a state jail felony. So going back to the Texas Code of Judicial Conduct, and I'm going to go to that in just a moment here. <clears throat> the Texas Code of Judicial Conduct states the following. Our legal system is based on the principle that an independent, fair, and competent judiciary will interpret and apply the laws that govern us. The role of the judiciary is central to American concepts of justice and the rule of law, Intrinsic to all sections of this code of judicial conduct are the precepts that judges individually and collectively must respect, must respect and honor. 
the judicial office as a public trust and strive to enhance and maintain confidence in our legal system. This is the duty of a judge to maintain, to, to strive to enhance and maintain confidence in our legal system. I will tell you that on the day that I was there, nobody felt, uh, well, I would say that by and large, nobody felt that he maintained, enhanced or maintained confidence in our legal system. He seemed to act very discriminatory, very prejudicially, and that's part of the complaint. The judge is an arbiter of facts and law for the resolution of disputes and a highly visible symbol of government under the rule of law. Well, if anybody's gone to family courts and stuff like that, uh, the rule of law often does not apply. It's the rule of the mob, the wild, wild west. And I've even had judges tell me that, that the um, constitutional protections really are not, do not apply in family court. It is the wild, wild west of the law. So here, what I'm, I'm quoting right now is the Canon One that states that an ind independent and honorable judiciary is indispensable to justice in our society. A judge should participate in establishing, maintaining, and enforcing high standards of conduct and should personally observe those standards so that the integrity and independence of the judiciary is observed. Um, <clears throat> when a judge, and again, this is a typo on my part, when a judge is disregarding Article 1, Section 8, and Article 1, Section 13 of the Texas Bill of Rights, it would appear that judge is violating Canon 1. And when I talked about the, um, the Code of Judicial Conduct, let me just show you, because this is also available online. You can look for the Texas Code of Judicial Conduct. This was as amended by the Supreme Court through Tex, uh, of Texas through July 10th, 2019. This is the one that I have. So there are various canons that are here that judges have to uphold. Um, the Code of Judicial Conduct is not intended to be an exhaustive guide for the conduct of judges. They should also be governed in the judicial and personal conduct by general ethical standards. And the code is intended to state basic standards. So Canon 1, you must uphold, judges must, must uphold the integrity and independence of the judiciary. And once again, it says an independent and honorable judiciary is indispensable to justice in our society. Uh, Canon 2, avoiding impropriety and the appearance of impropriety in all of the judge's activities. So a judge must shall comply with the law and should act at all times in a manner that promotes public confidence in the integrity and impartiality of the judiciary. When Judge Michael Moore ruled as he did and said some of the things that he did, it did not instill, it did not promote public confidence either in, in the integrity nor the impartiality of the judiciary. Uh, Article 3 says that the, um, the judge should be performing the duties of the judicial office impartially and diligently. And it talks about various things down here. I'm just going to scroll down to Canon 4. Um, again, a judge should dispose of all matters of judicial, should dispose of all judicial matters promptly, efficiently, and fairly. Not biasedly, not uh, favoring one person. Fairly, it must be done fairly. So when you have a person like Mayor Reagan Johnson who was committing a state jail felony, something that I personally reported to the police it, as a felony in progress, and Judge Michael Moore, I am pretty sure, knew all about that, and he just ignored it. He ignored that. He was upset because Brandon was talking about this publicly. Uh, so even though she was committing a criminal action, the judge did not take that into account. That does not seem to be fair by any stretch of the imagination. Um, if you go down here a little bit further, Canon 4 says a judge shall conduct their extrajudicial activities to minimize the risk of conflict with judicial obligations. Uh, chap uh, canon number 5 coming up here. Uh, a judge should refrain from inappropriate political activity. Uh, canon 6. Um, compliance with the code of judicial conduct and it talks about all of these individuals that need to be in compliance with the code of judicial conduct a little bit further down here um, canon 7 the effective date of compliance a person to whom this code becomes applicable should arrange his or her affairs as soon as reasonably possible to comply with it construction and terminology of the code the code of judicial conduct is intended to establish basic standards, basic standards for ethical conduct of judges. 
And this should be something that we should not have to be concerned about, that judges would act ethically. But the reality is, is that some judges do act unethically. Some judges uh, are very unethical, and that's why we report them. Uh, terminology, and I thought this was very interesting. So when a judge shall do something or shall not, it denotes a binding obligation. The violation of whatever the shall or shall not is can result in disciplinary action. What a judge should do or should not do relates to aspirational goals and as a statement of what is or is not appropriate conduct, but it's not as binding, uh, not as a binding rule under which a judge may be disciplined. So this would be what a judge should be aspiring to do, but if he doesn't, he's not regard, it's not something that's um, disciplinable. Uh, may denotes permissible discretion, or depending on the context, refers to action that is not covered by specific prescriptions. I put that down for a different reason. I'm not, not going to talk about that right now. But to go back to the um, complaint that I've filed, what I tried to do this time is to say, in everything that I'm talking about here, what can this judge violate? So Canon 1 states that an independent and honorable judiciary is indispensable to our society. A judge should participate in establishing, maintaining, and enforcing high standards of conduct and should personally observe those standards so that the integrity and independence of the judiciary is observed. I felt he violated that. Canon 2 ways says a judge um, should act at all times in a manner that promotes public confidence in the integrity and impartiality of the judiciary. Canon 2B says that a judge uh, shall not allow any relationship to influence judicial conduct or judgment. Canon 3B says a judge shall perform judicial activities without bias or prejudice. And Canon 3B6 says a judge shall not, by words of conduct, manifest a bias or prejudice, including but not limited to bias or prejudice based upon sex. One of the issues that we have is when a judge is biased based upon the sex of the person. Uh, often, and I'm not saying it happens at every time, but often a judge is more biased toward a woman, sometimes toward a man. But if a judge is biased one way or another against any person based on his or her sex, that is something that that judge should not do. The judge shall, this is binding upon him, shall. He shall perform his judicial du duties without bias, without prejudice. And the judge shall not, shall not, by words or conduct, manifest a bias or a prejudice including but not limited to bias or prejudice based upon sex. And I would also say too that um, from my perspective, he also should not per, per, um, do something that, that manifests bias based on a person's position. Like for example, Reagan Johnson is the mayor of Mineral Wells. If she isn't right now, I believe she is right now. And at the time I believe she was, or was soon to be the mayor. So the judge should not say like, oh, the, she's the mayor, so I'm going to be biased on her behalf. Anyway, what I did say here is that no one who came supporting Brandon felt judge more disposed of the judicial manner, such as it was, fairly, an additional violation of Canon 3B number 9. Uh, as the commission knows, and, I, and, and uh, by the way, some of this stuff is also in the video that I put up there. Um, but this was just my general complaint against the judge. Usually what you do once you submit it, the, the State Commission on Judicial Conduct sends you an email, and if you want to provide additional information, you can do so. But I also wanted to remind the commission that we did have a testimony in front of the commission. Um, 19 people on Monday, October the 5th, um, basically stated that the public has virtually no confidence in the judiciary as it pertains to the family courts. Judicial misconduct in family courts happen routinely. And as I mentioned, as some justices and, and others have said, family court is the wild, wild west. Uh, there is no uh, type of, of law often that, that governs it. Uh, constitutional protections, what are constitutional protections? It is the wild, wild west of the, of the judiciary. Um, and every single complaint that was received on Monday, October the 5th, 2020, came from somebody talking about what happens in our family courts. And this would apply also as well to Judge Michael Moore uh, on the day that we were there. Two people from the, from the country of Columbia um, said that they actually 
I'm sorry, I, 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 I didn't realize that I've made some mistakes, but they actually um, uh, expect to serve more justice in Colombia. They actually see more justice in Colombia than what people receive in the Texas family courts. Uh, Judge David Hall of the commission is also aware that the 19 testimonies, Judge David Hall was the one who was presiding over the complaints um, that were testified to him on that day and um, of the complaints that it received on Monday, October the 5th, 2020, uh, were actually to the commission itself. Due to the importance of the matters at stake, we need the commission to do its job promptly, not nine or ten months down the road. And I will tell you that, again, once it, for the most part, when the commission has a complaint, it takes about nine months or more for the commission to resolve it. Uh, and no matter what they say, well, maybe they have too much of a workload, it is still not done promptly. It takes a long, long time. This is something that we're supposed to be able to trust in to make sure that ju the judges actually adhere to judicial conduct, and they do not in many instances. And yet the other thing is, is that you know, 9 to 10 or 12 months later, um, all of a sudden, well, we found nothing wrong with the judges and um, and just move on from there. Um, I believe that I have organized my material logically to facilitate a timely resolution of this particular problem of judicial misconduct. Obviously, I had a few misspellings. I messed up a couple of words and so on. But uh, I also said that I had it was received, um, I think it was an attorney and a friend both. I clicked all of this stuff. You click I am not a robot and you submit it. Um, so right now I'm not going to resubmit what took place here but again this is basically how you go about submitting a request, a complaint to the State Commission on Judicial Conduct. Once again the um, you go to the State Commission on Judicial Conduct website www.scjc.texas.gov and you come right down here on how to file a complaint. You go here and you do the online complaint form. So really, um, again, uh, it doesn't take that much time. It, you can easily do it within an hour, within half an hour, depending upon if you have everything uh, together. I tried to make mine a little bit more lengthy this time because what I tried to do, and I have not done this in the past, is that, again, I refer to specific canons of the Texas Code of Judicial Conduct um, and what I thought they were violating. I, I could have done more but I didn't do more at the time. Um, anyway, I did receive an email back stating that they had received my complaint but that's really all there is to it. And I believe that as a member of the public that if you see this you have a right, a duty, and an obligation to make sure that you file a complaint against these judges. These judges are judging people. They are making decisions against people that can ruin their lives, that can destroy their lives. And if these judges are doing it biasly or with discrimination, if they're not being impartial, if they are violating the Texas State Constitution, if they are violating the, uh, the Judicial Code of Conduct, and that's only 13 pages, you can read through it and find out what they've done. As an individual, I believe, again, you have the duty, you, you have the right, you have the duty, you have the obligation to report this judge. Because if we uh, do not, if we cannot trust the judiciary, that is a huge, huge problem. Um, an independent and honorable judiciary is indispensable, indispensable to justice in our society. And therefore, a judge should participate in establishing, maintaining, and enforcing high standards of conduct and should personally observe those standards so that the integrity and independence of the judiciary is preserved. Once again, if you go back to what happened October the 5th, I believe it was, 19 people decided to get online, and there were more that wanted to, just couldn't make it for whatever reason, to complain about the State Commission on Judicial Conduct not doing their job. So this is another, uh, the State Commission on Judicial Conduct, um, I don't know if, if they're doing their job or not. Often it does not seem like it. Uh, it seems, and I will talk about this at another time down the, down the road. So I'll take a couple of examples because if you actually go back to this, you can see where the State Commission of Judicial Conduct has actually taken disciplinary actions. And, um, and on some of them, they will have a whole explanation of what took place. You can read what they did and why. 
and maybe you're going to find out that you agree with them. Maybe you're going to find out that you think the State Commission on Judicial Conduct really messed up. And there's one uh, case in particular that I'm going to talk about that I think that they are so far off that the State of the State, uh, the, 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 the State Commission on Judicial Conduct, in my mind, discredited themselves um, because they're violating the Texas State Constitution for crying out loud. So we need to also hold the State Commission on Judicial Conduct to account. I don't know if this is um, some type of an agency that can be sunset, but I do believe that that's a possibility in a couple of uh, within a couple of years. I don't know that for a fact. Uh, but once again, that's all you have to do as far as submitting a complaint online. Go to the State Commission on Judicial Conduct, www.scjc.texas.gov. How to file a complaint. Go there. You do an online complaint form. You fill it out. Uh, you know, and send it in. It's really not that difficult. So that's basically just a quick tutorial. Uh, I hope that it was helpful. And I hope that if anybody goes to these courts, because I believe that according to the Texas Constitution, the courts shall remain open. What that means is that we have an obligation to go in to, and to watch the courts at times. If these judges are abusive, and some judges are very abusive, uh, if these judges are not impartial, and some judges are very partial, not impartial at all, if these judges are prejudicial, if these judges show bias based on sex or many other different things, these judges need to be reported. If we cannot trust the judiciary, we as a society cannot last. It's going. It, we 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 make it so that we the law is we, we mock the law. So that's it. Once again, uh, thank you for listening, and that's going to be it. Thanks so much.